Sure. All right, so if you don't mind stating um, your full name, when you were born, um, and how many children have you yeah. had? Albert D. Souza, I was born 1940, August 17th, and three okay. daughters, three. and eight grandkids. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky you. Yeah. All right, uh, your hometown, so Revere. Low right? Mass, huh? Your hometown, where did you grow up? Well, it would be Boston. It would be Boston. Boston. Yeah. Okay, what did your parents do for a living? My mother stayed at home, and then later on in years, she went a part-time job when we went to school, and she was home, and she was working. And my father was a barber for a while, and then he was a, uh, a machinist for General Electric. He made turbine engines. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. Didn't he used to have to pull out teeth, too? Huh? Didn't he used to have to pull out teeth? My grandfather. A, your grandfather did. He might have, but I, don't, I know my grandfather did. As a yeah. barber? Um, brothers or sisters? Yeah, one brother, one sister, Joe and Carol Linda. Uh, you're the oldest, right? Oh no, Joe. Uncle Joe's Uncle the Joe. oldest. Yep. And then you and then yep. Uncle Carol. Yep. All right. So tell us what life was like in your hometown. What year? Uh, whenever, when you were a child, I guess. Um, we can you start know, with uh, we can start with 1945. Living in East, we were living in East Boston, which is part of Boston. And we lived in a three tenement flat. And let's see, what can I remember of that? Three tenement that, flat? Wait, what does that mean? Like, there were three, three other stories. families? Yeah, yeah. What, did you just have your own floor? Yeah, yeah, we had our own floor. And let's see, we had to keep the shades down. There was no light. You couldn't show any light at all because off the coast of the Mass, there were German submarines. And they didn't want to see, they, if they spotted light, they could detect where they were and they could plot a course. So you, you couldn't put lights on at night. If you did, you had to pull all the shades down. Uh -huh. Yeah, and it was very difficult to get gas. She had coupons. And my mother used to have to go to the movie theater and they used to give away bags of food to the poor people if you were lucky to win it. And Wait, was it like a raffle? Yeah. Yeah. What, you put your, like, your name in or something? Yeah, you bought a it. ticket to the movie theater, and they give away big bags of food. And you saw a movie, and you were hoping to win the bag of food. Did you guys ever win? Maybe. I can't remember now. Yeah. We might have, but I can't remember. But I know yeah. we didn't win too many times if we did. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I remember when the war was over, my mother was dancing in the kitchen, saying she was very happy. And then when they dropped the bomb in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, yeah, some people said we shouldn't have. Other people said we should. There was a lot of controversy over that. You know, so. Yeah. Wasn't your, was your uncle in the war? My uncle Al was in the war. Right. Yeah. Where was he at? He was in. He was in the Battle of the Bulge. Oh, in, I didn't know that. In Germany, yeah. He was an interpreter. He could read and write French. So that's why they used him. He got hurt. Oh, he did? Yeah, he got hurt. Yeah. He never talked about it, and he was just a very quiet guy. And uh, he was, like I said, an interpreter. And he was he was important because he knew, he also knew a little bit of German. So uh, he was a valuable person. I didn't know that. That's, wait, that's really cool. Yeah. Okay, so where did you go to school? Uh, let's see, grammar school, I went to the John Winthrop, uh, junior high, they called it then, was the Patrick T. Campbell, okay. and high school was Boston Tech. Oh, what was it like? It was like the days of the Fonzies. <laughs> it was a good time. <laughs> Going to school? Yeah, it was a nice time, yeah. You liked it? Yeah, well, I didn't like studying. I wasn't yeah. exactly a rocket scientist, that's for sure. <laughs> you know? No, you did okay, clearly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you're smart, so. Yeah. Did you have a favorite subject? Oh, social studies. Oh, I was, was going to guess that. Oh, that's <laughs> you my favorite. Figure this much. Geography and history, that's yeah. English and math. <laughs> but I, 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 yeah, I like social studies. Okay. What, what did you do for fun? Yeah, what do you like to do for fun? That's what a good we, question. You mean when I yeah when you were growing Boston? up yeah when you were growing up but like what cool kids do yeah we all played in the street and I hate to use the word but we played stickball then we played they called juke ball and we played another game where you take a tennis ball you cut it in half 
and you play and you try to hit it, the ball makes funny moves to it. Ah. We always played up the street. Yeah. No organized sports when I was a kid. No. Yeah. Everybody played up the street, had a good time. And then we used to play handball off the wall oh, at, at yeah, the yeah. school. We well, have played that sometimes. Yeah. 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 Wait, so there must have been a lot of kids in your neighborhood then. Oh, there was a ton of kids. Yeah. Ah. It was kids everywhere. And when you live in Boston, all the houses are so close yeah. together. And there's two stories and three stories, and some of them would be uh, the one down the street from my house must have had 15, 20 apartments in there. Oh gosh. Yeah, so. Huge building. Yeah, they were all big houses, you know. That was the yellow block, they called it. I don't know what to say. There must have been 20 families living in there because it was three stories high, and it must have been, I'm going to say, Five long, so that's at least fifteen, I'd say. Yeah, oh, wow. and it was one or two of them. Then we had the the block on Fairbury Street, that was uh, probably the length of a football field, and there was all apartments there. So there was there was kids everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. You never had to. Yeah. Talk. And we used to hang out at Pete's Corner. That was the big Pete's thing. Corner. Pete's well, Corner. Like a like a shop or it was a variety store. Uh -huh. Oh. Everybody used to go there at night and have a coke and chew the fat and talk about sports and everything else. And then eventually somebody got a car and he became like the Fonzie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So wait, so how much did like things cost? Like how much is like a candy bar? Or like all a bottle of Coke? Oh Jesus creep or something. <laughs> if you remember, I'm I know that's a good Maybe question. ten cents. Ten cents? Probably. Yeah. For a bottle of Coke. Yeah, yeah, I'd say about ten cents. Or like a candy bar. Or no gas. Gas was a gallon about uh, twenty cents a gallon. Can you imagine that today? Yeah. <laughs> that would be crazy. Um, how did you earn money growing um, up? Did you have like an allowance to kind of do odds and ends? No. In them days, no, no kids had allowance. That was unheard of so, because yeah. most of the parents came through the depression, and they appreciated a buck. And you had to work. My first job was I worked in a bagel factory at fourteen. Really? Right bagels. How? What? Like, would you go after school and then work? And yeah, like, on the I'd go after school and I'd work two or three hours and I'd work Saturday afternoon and Sunday afternoon making bagels, handmade. Oh wow! Did All you get like a pay, you a paycheck every week? Yeah, that was like. 50 cents an hour. Oh my gosh. That's yeah. crazy. Don't forget, that's but, 1954. Everything yeah. was cheap. Everything was relative. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think I was making maybe 50 cents an hour. A little more, a little bit less. Yeah, than but that's yeah. awesome when you're 14, right? Yeah. You're yeah. Yeah. I was making 10 to 12 dollars a week. I, I was happy, but I had to give it to my mother and father. Every week? The whole, the whole yeah. paycheck? The whole paycheck. Oh, and wow. then they would give me some money from that. Yeah. Well, like I said, I, my mother and father, they grew up in the Great Depression, and uh, they didn't have anything, so the little bit they had, they appreciated yeah. big time. You know? Was the same for Uncle Joe and Auntie Carol? Same thing. Yeah. 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 Same yeah. thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, did you, oh, did you go to the movies at all? What was your favorite movie growing up? A favorite movie growing up? Hmm. Do you have a bait right now? It's like, you gotta narrow down all these choices. <laughs> I think, if I was to say, either Gone with the Wind I love that or book. Casablanca. Really? Yeah. And I still watch Casablanca. I've never seen it, actually. Oh, you've got to be kidding. <laughs> no, I really haven't seen, seen it. it. No. I really haven't. I know. It's one of the 10 best movies ever made. I know. I got the DVD. Well, then I, yeah, then I'll have to borrow it. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Know, but... I read, I read Gone with the Wind, though. I like it's Gone what? I've read Gone with the Wind. Yeah, I haven't seen oh, the movie, yeah, but I've read oh, the book. The book's really I didn't read good. the book. It's, it's a long one. So really, it's yeah. like this thick. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot. It took me all summer. Yeah. Um, did you listen to the radio or watch television? That's all we had was the radio. Growing up, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Right, the, the movie, the on the radio, it was Inter Sanctum, The Fat Man, <laughs> The Green Hornet, <clears throat> and then... Uh, Bob Hope was on Inter Sanctum. We, that's what we used to listen to, the radio. Yeah. I don't know, but like the radio programs. 
Would you just do like every night or just kind of every night, every weekly? Yeah, every night, yeah. After we had dinner, we did our homework. My father would say, okay, let's listen to the radio. So we listened to the radio. At that time, we didn't know yeah. anything better. To, to us, it was great. Yeah. My grandfather had the barber shop, and he put the radio in there. My father put the radio in the barber shop, and he wouldn't let him keep it. Why? This was 1990. He thought it was the devil coming out of the box. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, I guess it was like so, so new, right? Yeah. This, yeah, like but I was thinking that the bar. You got to think back, and then yeah, yeah that's you true. Know, it's just like me. I don't understand how the Bitcoin works. I don't understand I how the either. iPhone works. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it's just there. And of course, he was ignorant. That was a turn of the century, maybe about nineteen twenty or so, nineteen twenty one. And my dad brought the radio in, and he says, "Take it out. That's the devil speaking." So he had to take it out. That's crazy. Yeah. You would figure that the customers would like the radio. Yeah, but you gotta think. So, yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah. yeah that's you true. can't think <laughs> today. You gotta think back almost a hundred years ago. I know. It was, you know, crazy. airplanes were just starting and everything else. You know, you think today one way, but you turn the clock back a hundred years. You yeah. Know? Cars, there weren't that many automobiles. Everything was hot drawn and everything. Yeah. You guys didn't own a car, right? We bought our, my first, I think my grand, my father bought the first car about 1949. Right after the war. A few years, an old broken down car. Oh, well, so how'd you, how did you get around before that? You just walked everywhere? You yeah, ride you a bike? Yeah. Everywhere. yeah. Oh, no, we didn't have a bike. Yeah. I don't know. That's, I don't know if my father didn't want to buy a bike because he was too cheap or because we lived in Boston and he, he really ended didn't up need getting it. killed. Yeah. Oh, was, on a bike? Oh yeah, I mean, this when you live in town, it, there's cars everywhere and trucks. Oh. You know what I mean? So, but everything was relatively close. You just walked to wherever you wanted to go. You know, it was easy. Yeah. The bakery was right up the street. The grocery store was right. There was no big markets. They were all small markets. Oh, like oh, where you got your food? Yeah, and, and you used to go in there in the afternoon. It was mostly owned by Jewish people, and you put your order in. They'd make it up and they'd deliver it to your house. And I did that for a while, delivering orders. Oh. On a big cart. You push this big cart with an order and they tell you where to go and you bring it to the house and you bring it upstairs and you, and you help the lady put it in the refrigerator. Oh my God. How, how old were you when you did that? I was about 15, so 16, oh. somewhere around there. Were you doing that while you worked at the bakery or was this after the bakery? This is after. I, 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 the bakery thing didn't last long because they were Jewish people. We were Catholics, okay. and they wanted us to work on a Catholic holiday, Christmas. My father says, you're not working. It was Christmas or Easter, I forget. Yeah. And he says, you're not working on the holiday. He says, they didn't work on their holiday. You ain't working on your holiday. So they, they fired me. <laughs> yeah. It's a yeah, well, that's how they did it. There was no yeah. phone around. You had no board to go to. You're gone. You're gone. Your history, you know. Um, what years were you in high school? Do you remember? What year? Yeah, what years? Let's see, nineteen fifty-six through fifty-nine, sixty, somewhere around yeah. there. And they did the high school have any like sports or clubs or anything? They had sports, yeah. I wasn't good enough. For, I tried out for baseball. I wasn't good enough. And the same thing with football. I wasn't. Did you uh, try tennis? Huh? I never played tennis until 10 years after that. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought you yeah. always played tennis. No, no. I didn't start until I was like 24. We played a lot of tag football. Uh, Liam plays that all the time. Yeah, I played a lot a, of that's tag That's a pickup. He'll go down. So. Did you go on dates at all? Yes. Yes, Are you a ladies' I man? Yes, I did. <laughs> a uh, lot of dates? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I went with uh, 16 years old, 17. Yeah, I went out. Five or six girls, yeah. Papa, look yeah. at you, ladies' sure. man. Yeah. How did that work? Did you have to, like, do you have to get parental permission? Yeah. Or yeah, like we that. went to the movies and, and ended up getting a, a frap and sold them, take the girl home, and that was it. Cool. We did that four or five times with different girls. Yeah. Yeah. 
then the fun came when we got the car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Did you ever have your own car? Like, how old were you when you got your, your my own first car? first car? Yeah. I was 16. But, and that was your own car? No, no, I didn't get my own car. Uh, I got my license in 1956, and I got my first car maybe 1958, an old Buick, oh. a couple of years afterwards, old clunker. Uh, any major moments from your high school years? Like any peak memories during that time? No, no it's really. just the average. Yeah. yeah. Just going to school, having a good time. I can't believe school was fun. That's so funny, because Lane would say the opposite. <laughs> Um, so you remember the end of the war? Yeah, but he, he's studious, and I wasn't, don't forget. Yeah, I was kind of a nerd. Yeah, I, you know, I was there. I was just taking up space, you know. Wait, so you went, you went to a tech school, you said, yeah, right? Yeah, well, What was your shop? My shop, well, it was half tech and half academics. Yeah. And I was going to be in the machine shop like my father, but my math wasn't that good, so we flunked out of that. And then when I quit high school, my father says, either you're going to college or you're going to barber school, one or the other, but you're not going to hang around doing nothing. Yeah. So I ended up going to barber school. Right after high school? Yeah, right after high school. And then school. did you work with your father? No, I worked with my brother. He got me a job. Oh. In Rochester. Yeah. At a barber shop? Yep. Okay. Yep. 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 Oh. yep. All right. So you, so you said you remember a little bit of the war, right? With the fact I mean, that you remember a little bit of the war. Yeah, I, I told you the parts of the war. I, right. No right. lights and um, seems hard to believe, but there were German submarines off the coast of Massachusetts, and they caught them too. Yeah. No. Do you remember like uh, any like the radio announcement about the bomb being dropped? Mm, no. 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 Okay. And then do you remember the end of the war with Japan? So yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 I remember at the end of the war. Yeah. With Japan. Well, Germany ended first, and then Japan. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember? Do you remember those as two separate like occasions? They kind of like one event in your head. The one big one with Japan. Yeah. Because the Germans gave in, but the Japs wouldn't until we dropped the bomb. Is that when your mom was dancing around the kitchen? Yeah, the war is all, but she didn't say if it was the bomb. She just said the war is all, but Japan finally. Says we're done, we're cooked, you know. Yeah. So that's when she was happy dancing in the <laughs> kitchen and that the war's over. Everybody, everybody was. Other people yeah. were out in the street saying the war's over. And yeah, it was pretty nice. After the war, up until the 60s, it was pretty nice. After that, things kind of, kind of deteriorated. A little bit. Yeah. So when did you see television for the first time? I like that question. <laughs> that's uh -huh. a good one. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to guess and say 1953. 53. Yeah. Where, like, in, like, a store front window, or? No, a, no friend, of, you guys got a friend of mine, his father got one. It was oh. a five-inch small one. Then my right. father got a five-inch one, and they put a magnifying glass on it, so it come up to be a seven- or an eight-inch one. Well, they, were the, they just put a piece of glass in front? Really? Really? Yeah. How like so? Could well, everyone it was, about, watch it was it? about that big. And they put the magnifying glass right in front of it, and it right. blew it up to be like maybe eight by ten. That's what they did, and there was no color, just black yeah. and white, and you had nothing but rabbit ears. And sometimes it would come in, sometimes it wouldn't come in. And then it would be snowy, and <laughs> not like today. <laughs> you guys ever end up getting your own TV? Yeah. And the, I think maybe about a year after that, a year and a half, my yeah. dad got his own TV. Was it a five-inch one, or had they yeah, improved it was a little five, bit? It was a yeah. three or a five-inch one with a magnifying glass. That's what everybody That's so did. Funny. <laughs> I didn't know that they did that. Wait, so what were some of your favorite TV shows? Were there even that many? Oh, Jesus, funny. I can't remember any favorite TV shows. Hmm. Or what do you guys just watch? Were there any like weekly programs? Yeah. Well, what 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 happened is the programs that were on radio became the programs on TV, like Into Sanctum. Oh, right, right. It just That's transferred so, over. Yeah, the Fat Man. They just went from radio to TV. Was so, that cool seeing it? Yeah. From radio yeah, to TV. Yeah. And uh, my favorite one was Gunsmoke. Was that like a Western? Yeah, it's a Western, Gunsmoke, James on that show. We used to watch that every week. 
Yeah, it's still on. My dad loves westerns. <laughs> it's still on 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 cable on one of them goofy stations, and I have gun smoke. But I I I'm talking about the original one, which was about nineteen. I don't know, probably fifty six or so, somewhere. Yeah. Around there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I so when you were talking about going into the sixties, kind of deteriorated. Did you were you told anything about the communist threat? What was that again? Were you told anything about the communist threat, like as you kind of? No. I mean, post World War Two, I guess. I guess all post World War Two. No, no because at that age, I was just out having fun. Yeah. Riding around the convertible, chasing girls, <laughs> going to record hops. We all record had, hops. Yeah. What are those? Record hops. Like uh, the church used to run them, like the Immaculate, the hall downstairs. Oh, yes. they were like dances. The dances. They called them record hops then. Really? Yeah, record hops. Oh, what, yeah. You would we go with all your friends? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The big thing was Elvis Presley, and the girls used to go crazy when he came on, blue suede shoes and everything. Yeah. Did Anna hate Elvis? Oh, no, she hated the Beatles. She liked, she loved Elvis. She loved Elvis. She hated yeah. the Beatles. Yeah, right? she didn't like the Beatles, yeah. She was yeah. like, kind of. Elvis was her boyfriend. You kidding me? <laughs> I would have dumped grandpa for him. <laughs> uh, do you remember the air raid shelters? Yes. How did that work? Well, the air raid shelters would go off and the teacher would just say, you got to go underneath your desk now. And you go under your desk and then they would go off again saying it was all clear and you come out and you go back and start doing yeah. your schoolwork. Yeah, did you even, right, like, did you even, did you even care that? No, no, you didn't know anything about it. You were too young. Yeah. You didn't understand it, you know. You just did what the teacher told you to do, and that was it. Get yeah. underneath your desk and hope for the best. <laughs> hope the bombs weren't coming, but they never came, thank God. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you remember the start of the space race between the U.S. and the oh, U.S.? Oh, yeah, inside? sure. What do you remember? Yeah. Well, I remember the Russians beat us. Yeah. And then JFK says, we're going to put on a man on the moon before 1970. And they all said it couldn't be done. But he did it. He did it. We did it. We beat the Russians to the moon. Oh, yeah. Did you get to watch that on TV? How was that? It was cool. It was hard to believe because you, it's hard to believe there was somebody on the moon. It looked yeah. fake. You know, it really didn't look real at all. You know, it just looked. But it did happen. You know. We just went to the JFK Museum um, this past week, and they they have a in in there like a capsule of the guy that was the first guy in the space. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, and it's a little tiny capsule. I'm like, I can't believe this made it like all the way. Oh, them capsules! I don't know how they did it. Oh my god! When did they get claustrophobia? No, I don't. Being I, in there, yeah. Been in there for so long. Then the three astronauts got burnt, and the ones that never left the ground. That was a Mercury one. That was terrible. Very what year was that again? I'm going to say 1963, somewhere around. What there. happened? You know how the rocket is on the ground? Yeah. And the capsule's on top, it shoots yeah. them up? Well, it never got off the ground. All of a sudden, there was a fire in the capsule, and they couldn't get them up. And all three of them burned to death inside. Oh, my God. That must have been one of the first trials into getting into space, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sad. Yeah. Well, Gus Grissom was one of them. I forget the other two. He was the one that went up the first the second time, and uh, he opened up this capsule too soon in the ocean, and it sank, and then he got scared. But he says he never did. He says it accidentally opened up. But who knows? I think he got scared. Well, I would. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be <laughs> like, I'm going to get out of this yeah. capsule. See you later. <laughs> yeah. All right, what about the Camelot years of JFK? What does that even mean? I actually don't know what that means. That's 19, well, a musical came out in 1961, Camelot. About like Sir Arthur and the Round yeah, Table? Right. And President Kennedy, that was his favorite musical. And that's oh. how they got the name, the Camelot. And he was uh, Sir Lancelot, and, <laughs> and she was Genevieve, I don't know, wherever she oh was. My and that song. So that. That was their favorite musical, you know, and uh, oh. that was a nice musical. It was a nice, yeah, it was a nice time. Why were they called the Camelot year, the Camelot years? Because was that it? was the same year as President Kennedy. It oh. came out the same year. He became president, 1961 maybe, and Camelot came out, and it, called, and it just got the name. Someone just tagged it, and it took off from there. You yeah. know what I mean? 
But uh, yeah, it was a nice time until he got shot. And then after that, everything changed big time. What do you mean? Well, the country went downhill. He got shot. His brother Bobby got shot. Um, Martin Luther King got shot. George Wallace got shot. Uh, there was a couple of other ones in there too, and it's just a lot of, a lot of turmoil. Yeah. You know, then the Vietnam War started with the Gulf of Tonkin. Yeah, and that's going. Huh? Yeah. Oh, you read about the Gulf of Tonkin resolution? Well, I read some. I no, I was watching some of the the Ken Burns documentary. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good. That was a good documentary, but. Which one? That one of Vietnam. The one that was on oh, a few I saw the one in Vietnam. Yeah. yeah. That was that a was good a one. Series. That was about eight or ten. Yeah. Eight or ten. Yeah. That was a long series. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, there was a lot of. I was for the war, but I guess it was a mistake. Yeah. You know, in hindsight, but you know, at the time they were communists were taking countries, Cambodia, Laos, and they scared everybody that the communists were going to take go into Europe and everything else. So. Yeah. Oh, did they use all that propaganda yeah, to kind of get yeah, to you? Yeah. So a lot of people got scared, and then uh, there's a lot of people that looked into it and found out, you know, it was like uh, the priest, the two priest brothers that looked into it. I think of their name. They got papers in, from D.C., I mean the Pentagon, and uh, kind of said it was a bunch of bull that they, we shouldn't be in there. I don't think of their name. Then they had the Secretary of Defense, McNamara. He was giving the president a lot of baloney and everything else. Yeah. You know, so just one thing after another. You know. Then they come up with, they, they had a drug then, LSD. And kids were taking that, and that was a terrible drug. Oh, in the 60s or in the 70s? In yeah. the late 60s, early 70s. Oh, like the whole hippie culture. Yeah, yeah. You take that and you think you could fly, you know, you get off a 10-story building and you take the pill and, oh, I'm going to fly like a bird. And off oh, you went. oh, yeah. yeah. A lot of people well, that's, yeah, that's when it was first introduced, huh? right? Did a lot of people take that at like, concerts and stuff? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Big time. Yeah, they had that big one up in New York, Woodstock. Did so you Woodstock? go? No, I didn't go. No. I was married and had three kids. I wouldn't go to that wacky thing. <laughs> Sitting up in the field and it's not yeah. for me. I've seen pictures of it. There's so many people there. I know. The crowd's enormous. They never advertised it neither. It's just word of mouth throughout the country. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I think 400 people, 400,000 people showed up. Oh my God. Yeah. Like, like a rock star lineup. Yeah, yeah. And most of the singers were all drugged out anyways. Most of them died. Janis Joplin, the guy from the doors there, what was his name? Oh, I forgot the game. He, they were going all whack. Wasn't yeah. for me. That's for sure. No, I'm too conservative. <laughs> <laughs> Probably a good thing there. That yeah. Case. Uh, do you remember the Cuban Missile Crisis in Oh yeah, yeah. I remember the Cuban. No. Yeah. Uh, well, the only thing I can know about that is that Russia was sending missiles into Cuba, and we sent the satellite spies up there, the U two. And they saw the missiles in Cuba, and Kennedy said, you've got to uh, get them out of there. If not, we're going to come to war. And it was like two days. Everybody was tense. The Russian ships came in, and then our ships came in, and they said, if you go any closer, we're taking Was, was it televised? Yeah. Some oh, it was. Of, some parts of it were televised, yeah. So what, for those two days, did you, were you, was everyone worried? Like, yeah, like, oh, sure. Happened, you know? Everybody was worried, yeah. Yeah. Did you go to work and stuff still? Or? Oh, yeah. No, yeah. I, mean, I went to work, but then if you had a TV at work, you'd watch it too, you know? Yeah. So Kennedy told you, if you get any closer, we're going to blast you on. And they tried, but we had to make concessions too. It wasn't all one way. Because Khrushchev was the premier then, mm -hmm. and he says, well, you have to get your missiles out of Turkey, and you have to get your missiles out of where? Another country. He says, we'll pull off. You're going to take your missiles out of Turkey because they're facing us. Excuse me. And then Kennedy says, yeah. So we took the missiles out of Turkey. I'm trying to think of the other. Was it Poland? Might have been Poland. I forget. We took the missiles out and Cuba became a communist country for years after that. Till now, they're, they're nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Really fun. Oh, so you remember the JFK assassination? Oh, right? yeah. I remember that. Yeah. How was that day? 
funny. How was that day? Because I sent him some, this could probably not sound corny, but I saw an episode on, of Mad Men where they do an episode on the JFK yeah. assassination. Yeah, I, it was a, in November, November 22nd, I believe, was a warm day. We had the windows open in the barber shop, and we were just, it was slow, and we were listening to the radio, and then someone came over the radio and said, JFK has been assassinated. And then we turned the TV on, and they showed it in Dallas, Texas, and everything, and that was the first time that really happened, right? Well, except for the, what you call it, McKinley got shot. Yeah. And then Abe Lincoln got shot. Well, yeah, but in terms of, like, at press, like it being televised or radio, like, that quickly. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was instant. I mean, it was like, yeah, yeah, the public could see it. Yeah, right, it was instant. Yeah, we saw it. I, I'm pretty sure we saw it right away. And then for three or four days, that's all we did was watch TV. The what was going on, and then the funeral, and it went on and on and on. It was terrible, you know, the way he was shot, you know. You know, I remember that very distinctly. You know, some things you don't forget, and that was one of them, you know. Yeah. Did you like Kennedy? No. Yeah. No, I didn't like him. Uh, I was a Republican, you know, so. Yeah. Maybe today he'd he'd be doing good today because he was he'd be like a Republican today the way they are now. And I, who did he run against? Oh, Nixon. I yeah. voted for Nixon. Yeah. Well, they said that was the first uh, campaign that was televised, and they say yeah. because of that they think a lot of it was. Well, Nixon was sick to begin with, and they, he didn't want to wear any makeup. And Kennedy and his father knew the newest thing out there was television, and you had to look good. So. He says, you got to get a makeup man. He was a nice looking guy. He was smart, articulate, he had charisma, he had charm. Nixon was like a piece of haddock. <laughs> you, couldn't, you couldn't compare. You couldn't compare the two of them. I mean, Kennedy, Kennedy had the package. He, he was a nice looking guy. And he, like I said, he was smart, articulate, and he knew how to handle the press. He, he was good. He used to enjoy listening to his press conferences. Because he knew if it was starting to get boring, he'd go to a certain reporter that would ask a goofy question. It he was, would know? Huh? Yeah, he, he would know. know. There was always one woman there. I forget her name. I could see her face. And he knew. He'd say, I'm going to, he'd point to her and she'd have a goofy question. He'd give a, a real goofy answer and everybody would laugh. And God, she just died a few years ago, I think. But like I said, he knew how to handle the press. And the, Things were getting too dragged out. He'd go to one or two people. He knew would ask a, a stupid question, and he'd lighten the whole place up. He was good. He was very good. Yeah, yeah, very good. Do you remember the coming of the Beatles? Oh yeah, sure. Did you have Beatlemania? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We um, what did we do? Yeah, nineteen sixty-two or sixty-three. Somewhere around there, we went out. A friend of mine used to work next door to the Boston Guards. At that time, it was Wonderbird, and he used to make bread. And um, he says, pick me up after work, and maybe we can get in to see the Beatles. So we, I think we got out like 9, 10 o'clock at night, and the Boston Gardens was packed. You couldn't even get near it. People out in, I think it's Causeway Street, Sudbury Street, couldn't get near the place. So we stayed there just to see if we could see the Beatles coming out. Everybody thought they were going to come out the main entrance, but they come out the side entrance, and nobody knew. So we we're all waiting for the Beatles to come out the front entrance, but they come out the side, and they come. Then we saw the car, and then they were gone. They, the expressway was there then. Yeah. You could just get on the expressway, and they were they went to Logan Airport, but it was it was wacky. People everywhere. It was mobbed. They changed everything. In terms of? In terms of, uh, I, I, I don't think how. I mean, they just drew people. They had charisma, you know, and they were it. They, they, they were like a magnet. Every, they, just, they just drew people. They wrote good music. Yeah. They sang good. They had the they whole package, you know what I mean? And they were different with the long hair over the ears and everything else. <laughs> and, and, you know, they had a good publicist guy. Who was the guy that was behind them? Your dad knows. 
I forget his name, but he, yeah. he, he was good. He knew how to promote them and everything. Why didn't he even hate them so much? Huh? I don't know. <laughs> she didn't like him. I don't know why. I did, you know? Yeah. I didn't like him because they had long hair. They put me out of business, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. Because yeah. of the trend, right? Yeah. With everyone yeah. cutting oh, their yeah. hair like that. Yeah. Everybody wore their hair long. Yeah. So I had to close out my shop and go into other work. Where'd you go? What'd you do? For eight to ten years, I sold building supplies. And then for the next seven or eight years after that, I worked in a high-tech business, Wayne Labs. I didn't know you worked there. What, sales? Huh? Sales? I was in marketing. Oh. Marketing. We used to do bids and proposals for state and local government. That's why oh. I was in there, in that group. There was about 40 of us in that group. Sorry. Yeah, so I worked there for about eight or ten years. Yep. That's so funny. I didn't know that. All right. What were some of your favorite TV shows from the 60s? Oh, Happy Days. Yeah. Bondi. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Happy Days. Yeah. That was that was the, the favorite show. We used to watch that all the time. I can't think of any other ones. Do you have any favorite movies? Huh? Any favorite movies from the 60s or 70s? Mm, not that sticks out in my mind. No, not like Castle Bones, <laughs> you know, and uh, and Gone with the Wind. They were just on yeah. oh, no, another playing field. I think the Sound of Music. Oh, yeah. That was yeah. in the sixties. Yeah, we watched that all I the time the every Christmas Eve. Yeah, when with your mother and, and your aunts and everything else, we'd watch it. We have Christmas Eve watching Sound oh, of Music. I know. I think that was another big movie we liked. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, the TV, the Fonzie, and all the shows like that. You know, yeah. You know, they were kind of simple. They were simple times, not like today. Confusing. Do you have any other favorite music from the 60s, or was the Beatles just the Beatles? Oh, I was always a big fan of, fan of Frank Sinatra. And I liked the Leatherman and what was the Beatles. Tony Bennett I wasn't too crazy about. Excuse me, and uh, I like rock and roll. Still yeah. like rock and roll, you know, even today. That's my favorite music to dance to, rock and roll. Yeah. It's the funnest, though. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. You have any favorite uh, bands or singers besides those? Favorite singer? Yeah. Well, today I'd probably say Michael Bublé. Uh, because he has a... Uh, Right, yeah, Tony Bennett, kind of yeah. yeah. Harry Connick Jr., I like him. Oh, I do like him. Yeah, huh? I do like do him. Do you like him? Yeah, he's yeah. got a nice voice. I like him. And um, I like contemporary music, you know. I'm not. Yeah. The country and western. I like the old ones, country and western, like Chet Atkins. Yeah. I'm a big fan of Chet. He plays a wonderful guitar. God. Yeah. His guitar, when he plays, it's almost like he it's talking. I mean, he just. Not loud, but enough. Yeah, just just right. Did yeah. you like Bob Dylan at all? No, no. never liked Bob. I thought he was tremendously overrated. Really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, he never care. liked him. Yeah. I think he had one song that I liked, a big hit that he had. But other than that, when he sang, he always sounded like he was sick. You know? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Not about it. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, did you or someone you know serve in the military during the 1960s? I So that'd be like the Vietnam War. Uh, my brother got out in 59. Was he in the Korean War? No, he was too, too young for the Korean he War. He went in in 1955 and got out in 58. So I just did like basic training. It was just yeah. station. And I had friends of mine that one went in the Marines and one went in the Army. I was married at the time, and I got drafted when they put the wall up in Berlin. Oh, really? I knew there was a draft when they put the wall up. Yeah, sure. There's always been a draft up until the last 25, 30 years. Yeah, that's true. You used to have to get a draft card when you turned 18. You went down to the, the service department, and you had a card, and you had a number, and you had to, you had to register with the government every year. But so you were exempt because you were married? I was kids. married. And your grandmother was pregnant with Aunt Michelle, and they said, 
if she doesn't have the baby, if something should happen, we want you to come back because you're gone. Oh I'll, be drafted. I'll be drafted. They said, if she has the baby, come back with a birth certificate. And, oh, you, you had it for, you had to have that proof. Yeah. Yeah. So I had to go back with the birth certificate. They said, okay, you're exempt. If the things get worse, then we'll probably draft you. I said, okay. But it didn't. They put up the wall in Berlin to stop the east going over to the west. And that was after World War II, three countries got messed up. France, Britain, United States. They didn't know who was going to take what. They all fought. Well, we'll take a little bit of this Germany. We'll take a little bit of that Germany. They went back and forth. and It went on for two or three years. And then uh, finally Russia said, we're taking it over. We're putting up a wall. And that was it. So we made a couple of boo-boos there. As a matter of fact, it's in my new book here about Truman and everything else. Wow. Yeah, so they put up the wall and that was terrible. People would try to go over the wall and they were getting shot and they had barbed wire and they'd let them rot on there so people could see it. Ah, I didn't know that. But it's like a warning for other people not to try We'd it. We'd take them down there, let their bodies rot on the fence. So people, then they dug tunnels, they went underneath, a lot of people, a lot of people made it, and a lot of them didn't. And then President Reagan is the one that brought the wall down. You know, yeah, it was, Do you remember that day when the wall was? Oh yeah, sure, yeah, oh yeah. Couldn't believe it. I never thought I'd see the wall come down. Really? Yeah, I mean, they put it up. They didn't want the east going to the west I never thought, I didn't think Russia would give up, but Reagan did it, give him a lot of credit, you know. He told him in Germany, you know, take down this wall, Gorbachev, and he took it down. So Reagan gets a lot of credit for that. Yeah. You know? It was terrible, because then people had nothing. The people in the West were living good. They were productive. The ones on the East, they were being held back by the Russians and everything else. Now it's nice, it's just one Berlin. Yeah. So, and I remember that yeah, very much. Yeah. Yep. Crazy. Wait, so your <laughs> friends that served in Vietnam, do they do they ever talk about it with their time over there? Uh, let's see. Eddie got out before the Vietnam War started, but I worked with a couple of people at Wang that were in the in the Vietnam War. Yeah, one of my good friends at Wang, he was he was in it. Did they ever talk about it? He only talked about it because he got Agent Orange. Oh, he did. And this, uh, he was in the tank. He was a sergeant. He was ahead of two tanks. And this whole side of his face got blown off. This whole part of his jaw was gone. A fifty caliber, which is probably that big, from another tank hit him here. He just said he was lucky. He took this... Took the whole sag right here, right off. Didn't How did you even survive? Well, they did. They did, yeah. And then later on, the last I saw of him, Paul, he lives in Drake, I think, thought he had Agent Orange, because they sprayed the whole country with Agent Orange. Yeah. You know? but he, so he had Agent Orange, or he thinks he does? Yeah, he was pretty sure he had Agent Orange, yeah. He went to the VA hospital, and he was having troubles with his stomach, and Last time I heard, he had an operation you know, to help remove something from his stomach. Who knows what it was? That's crazy. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And then the other friends, they don't talk about it. Mm -hmm. Oh, it just, just hasn't come up in conversation. It's like a weird conversation starter. <laughs> yeah, well, one time one thing came up with him. Uh, he was a little upset. A picture in Vietnam where they were fighting. And in the picture, he someone took the picture. He said he. he he shouldn't have t taken the picture, but he kept it for, I don't know. Yeah. But there was some guy's head blown off, you know, and over in the corner. And he says, I didn't want to take it, but I don't know. He, they took it anyway. Yeah. So, you know, that was about it. How was it back home, though, during the Vietnam War? It was terrible. Like, all the protests. They and... were protesting, yeah. They were always protesting. Stop the war and everything else. And, and it was crazy because the... For the longest time, not Vietnam, they'd go, they'd go to debate and how to de 
to bake. They talked more about what kind of a table they were going to use. Are we going to use a round table today? Are we going to use an octagon table or a square table? <laughs> I don't know. What kind of a chair are you going to use? People are getting killed. And they were debating as to what kind of a desk they were going to have. That went on for a long time. It was crazy. Yeah. No. Are we going to have a square desk? No, nah, let's have a round desk because we can now see each other nicer. And that went on for a long time. And uh, from what I read, most of the um, the piece came from Henry Kissinger. He tried at Harvard, and then he became ambassador. I think it was. He became an aide or whatever it was. And he's the one that really did a lot for the war. He, they said he used to go at night. They used to put a label on that he was a ladies' man. He, was, he wasn't a very good looking man, but he had a lot of power. Yeah. But actually what he was doing, from what I read, is that he was meeting with the Viet Cong privately and saying, look, let's try to end this thing. Never mind what kind of a table we got. Let's end this war. And that went on and he did it. Then Nixon finally ended it. You know? Yeah. It took a long time. Do you think it was going to last that long? No, they first went into it went on and on. Yeah. Just like Afghanistan. Oh, same yeah. thing. Same thing. Goes on and on, nine, ten years now. Yeah, it's, it's just all over there. Yeah. So, what did you think personally about the Vietnam War, especially how the U.S. personnel? In the beginning, were... in the beginning, I was for it. Yeah. Towards the end, I started to change my mind about it. How so, do you think? Do you think it was fair the way they treated the military when they got home? Oh no, it was terrible. What were they doing? Oh, they they would yell at them. They called them you know, traitors. They would spit on them. When they came first came home, they never said they were in Vietnam. Yeah. They just wouldn't say. People got mad at them, and, and I ne I never thought that was right. I I didn't go along with that at all. Yeah. I think they deserved a lot more. That's why now they're trying to make up to them. You know, that's the only one that they came back on. And people didn't like them. And, they would yell at them and everything else. You know, it was terrible. It wasn't very pleasant for them at all. Yeah. That's awful though too, especially yeah. when they're the ones risking their lives over there too. Yeah, it, it is, you know, it was like I said, it was terrible coming back and you know, giving your life and getting shot up and everything else and people yelling at you, telling you to go back home and and everything else. So when How I, was it after Vietnam? Like how like domestically, as far as what? In terms, like, was there like a relatively like peaceful time period, like kind of when Reagan comes in? Oh, and yeah, yeah, I mean, there was a peaceful time after that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Things were going pretty good. What did we have for President Carter came in, Jimmy Carter, and then Reagan, and yeah, things were pretty nice after that. Now we got Afghanistan. Yeah. With President Bush. Do you see any differences between that war in terms of like Vietnam or Korea? I don't know. I think we made a mistake. Yeah. Yeah. We got rid of Hussein. He knew how to control his people. You know, we got rid of him, and now you got so many groups over there arguing with the who's in charge and everything else. But, but he also killed a lot of innocent people too. He used to uh, he killed up one whole village. Of the Kurds, I think it was up in northern Iraq. He sprayed them with gas and killed hundreds and hundreds of them. But, you know, they want to be in power. They don't want to lose their power, so they're going to do whatever they can to stay in power. So you got to remove them. And yeah. We remove them, and now we got the mess we have now. <laughs> you know, just like in Syria and Libya, we got rid of Gaddafi over there, and there's trouble there. You know. You know, then people are so far backwards compared to us. So it's, it's hard, you know. But that's it. Any more questions? I didn't think so. Did we cover anything all else? our bases? Yeah. Is there anything else you want to talk about? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Not that I can think of. I think we covered it all. Oh, did you like Nixon? Yeah. I did. Yeah, I liked Nixon. Yeah. He did a lot. I bet when Watergate like, broke out. Huh? When Watergate, when the whole scandal broke out. Yeah. Were you My surprised? Name. Was anyone surprised? Wasn't he kind of paranoid? Was what? Was anyone surprised? Wasn't he kind of paranoid? No, because he had the nickname Tricky Dick. 
<laughs> you know, so, I mean, but he, oh, he he was a kind of a slime ball anyway. He yeah. was paranoid, big time. Yeah. You know, he was always afraid somebody was looking over his shoulder and everything. And uh, he, that's how he won his first election in Congress, being a slime ball and beat some woman out there by false accusations. And then I can't think of her name. But uh, I like Nixon. He did a lot with China. He opened up China. He was one of the original ones that finally got us talking to China. Now they're, what, they're one of our biggest exporters and, and yeah. importers, you know. And I liked him. I wasn't a fan of poor Jimmy Carter. I mean, he just, he was just too nice of a guy. Do you remember the hostage crisis? Yeah, I remember that. He made a mistake there. And the helicopter went down, two helicopters went down, and one of them, the dust and, and, and the sand got in the blades and they couldn't start it back up again. And it was, it was, it was, I think we lost some men on that, a few guys on that one. And that didn't work out too good neither. Yeah. You know? But finally, I think it was Nixon that released them, you know? And we didn't talk about my boy that I like very much, John McCain. Oh, he, he's a vet. Yeah, he's a Vietnam vet. Yeah. Yeah, got shot down. Have you read his book? No, I haven't. You should read his book. Okay. Got shot down. He was in a camp for six years, prisoner. They broke his arms, they broke his legs, tortured him and everything else. And uh, he had a chance to leave, but he says, I'm not going to leave without my men. He yeah. says, when they are released, then I'll leave. He stayed another two years. Oh my gosh. I would have said, wow, well, nice meeting yeah. you guys. <laughs> it's a good relationship. Good luck. <laughs> but, it's a, but he did. He stayed until they all got released, you know. And even today, he can't move his arm. And he walks with the limp. Was he a big public figure back then? No. Not no, as big. No, no. But he wasn't. Just that he got shot down. And his father was an admiral. That's why they were going to release him. Oh. Yeah. And his. Going all the way back, did you ever watch Gates when he does the antique, not the antique, uh, not astrology, when you go back in time, the family tree? Oh, genealogy. Genealogy. Yeah, genealogy. Yeah. It's on channel two. Gates is the professor from Harvard that runs it. They did one on, on him. His great, 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 great uncle was an aide to George Washington. So his whole family has been in the service. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Went all the way cool. back. And Gates, like I said, that's Ancestry.com. That's what it is. And he went all the way back with John McCain. And, he, and even John McCain didn't even know it. He says, you're our great, 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 whatever. Five yeah. greats, whatever the heck it is. Went all the way back. He says, he was an aide to, to George Washington. He was on his staff. That's and crazy. then he, you know. Then his other relatives are in the Civil War and everything else. He's, he's a real patriot. You know? oh, no. That's why I like him so much. You know? Yeah. And uh, to think this bonehead president, the way he talks about him, the poor guy's dying of cancer, you know? Sad, you know? Yeah. Well, that's it, Katie. I think so, Papa. If you think Thanks. Okay.